Hey everybody, can you hear me? Can you see me? What's going on, good people? It is Tuesday, and you know what that means. It means my phone is good is quacking. Tuesday. It is June 1st. It is my mother's birthday. Uh, happy birthday, Mom. And acknowledge that out of the way. It's been a rough year, but... So, happy birthday, Mrs. Gallo. And we hope everybody's safe and healthy this year. It is Tuesday. It is Time for Gibson to update their demo shop on Reverb. And let me take my headphones off so I can hear myself better. Okay, now, for those uninitiated, for those uninitiated, for those who may not be familiar with it, uh, every Tuesday, Gibson updates their demo shop on Reverb. <clears throat> what that means is they take demo models, prototypes, uh, scratch and dents, and they put them up for sale. They have a special section on Reverb just for that. I wouldn't call it a secret, but it's really not advertised. They don't really call a whole lot of attention to it. I found this out through Trogly's Guitar Show. Thank you very much, Trogly. And so we are going to take a look right now live at the latest offerings. <laughs> this could be dangerous. This could be dangerous. I could very easily spend myself into oblivion on this thing so um we are going to take a look at what they have to offer now this is live i've been avoiding this all day <clears throat> let me get my coffee we're going to take a look at what they have okay okay let's see again this is totally live this is the gibson demo shop they send out guitars to people like greg cock and um, other people, they play them, they try them, they talk about them, then they send them back and uh, they wind up here. Okay, let's see what we got here. Les Paul Custom, Ebony. Uh, okay, I had a Les Paul Custom back in 1991. I sold my 335, I bought a Les Paul Custom, and then I quickly sold that and I bought the Red Standard. I wasn't crazy about it. Didn't like it for some reason. It just, I don't know, the neck, was, the neck profile was bad. Let's take a look at this. Okay, three, two, okay. Okay, hopefully you can see that. Okay. Eh, 359, eh. I think it's, it's matte finish. Light scratches near K, okay. small gap on the VO and victims of spec. Finish next smaller lacquer cracks. Yeah, so this is a scratch, this is a scratch and dent here. So yeah, so this is uh not let's see yeah this is yeah this is not a very good very good piece i don't like this for what they're asking 359.99 yeah okay uh, i'd probably pass on that Ooh, second offering here Ooh, baby oh oh baby now this is this is where it gets dangerous okay people look at that oh my goodness Gibson Les Paul 60 Tribute Satin Honey Burst Demo Model. <clears throat> it's got two P90s in it. <whistles> that is gorgeous. Take a look. Now it's got me thinking what's wrong with it, though. A black back. Well, the black back's not too bad. Usually it's... The Tribute Models, the backs are usually spray paint, are, are sprayed black. So. Okay. It's got the Gibson Deluxe Tuners, okay. Kind of Iriad specific. Uh, a couple scuff marks near the button. That's not a huge deal. Okay, all right, there we see. Yeah, the nut looks like it's n pulling away from the neck. The nut and then, oh yeah, it's got a little seam in the, a little separation there in the, In the between the fingerboard and the neck. Okay, let me see. Light scratches, light scratches, small lacquer, cracks both sides. 
of the nut modifications to back headset demo soft shell case included but i tell you though for 9.99 that might be a good deal for someone that might be that might be a good deal and then you take it and you get whatever work you have inspected by a tech and you i don't think there's any it's still gonna be playable but I don't think it's going to be anything that would make or break the instrument. Okay, next offering, Les Paul Black Cherry demo. Uh, see, this might be good for someone, but I'm not crazy about this color for some reason. I don't know what it is. Uh, don't like the color. So, okay, it's not a bad. It's got Grovers for tuners. Okay, studio. I think what else is wrong with it though okay fingerboard might be in good soon oh it's got a little it's got a little blemish here okay oh, it's not too bad but again not my the color not to my liking but maybe someone else would like it uh it's got two humbuckers two full humbuckers it's got a little imperfection here in the in the wood finish though 1099 at uh, you see 1099 is a bit for me 1099 is a bit pricey for a studio it seems especially it's, it's this is a demo model <clears throat> soft shell Gibson two year factory warranty playability only okay like I said not my thing but somebody out there might like this. Okay, another Les Paul Custom, this time $100 more. What is this? E275. E275, semi hollow? It's a full hollow? Full hollow body? Uh, color bleed, base side of fingerboard, a color bleed. Base side of fingerboard. I don't see, I'm not seeing any imperfections there. C neck profile. Minor color bleeding. Okay, so this is some some finish imperfections. So, okay, Gibson Clusens. Okay, this is not too bad. Yeah, okay, see, look, we got a little imperfection around the F hole. Which, again, is probably nothing. You could probably live with that. They they warranty it. As, when, I was, when I was younger, uh, when I first bought a hollow body, semi-hollow, 335, I was scared to death of the body warping. Warping and the F-holes collapsing on it itself. And I was really paranoid about that. But um, over the years, uh, from what I know, the only way to really ruin a hollow body is if you leave it in a hot car overnight or leave it in a hot trunk overnight or play it out in the rain. <laughs> and then leave it in a hot car overnight. So, okay, like I said, this is really not my kind of thing. Uh, $26.99? Nah. Nah, I don't... Nah, that's, that's not really... really okay, uh, next up. Ooh, this is kind of nice. Oh, you're calling me live on the air. Hold on. Yes? I'm not centered? I've I've never, I've never been centered. Okay, let me see if I can. Let me see. If, <laughs> move over to the right. Oh boy. Uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hold on. Display capture. Hold on. Jeez. <laughs> no, I didn't. Jeez. Hold on. Okay. Oh yeah. Hold on. Here we go. Hold on. Hold on. How do I do this? How do I do this here? Live on the air tech support people. Hold on. Okay. I think I got it. I got it. Is that any better? Okay, I think I think I got it better. 
Okay, just drag it over a little bit, slightly, so you can see the whole thing. Desktop, reset, transform. Hold on. <clears throat> Hold on. Set color. How do I do that? Reset, transform. Properties? Okay, hold on. Transform. Ah, here we go. Copy, reset. Ooh, okay, that did something. To infinity and beyond. Okay. Okay. All right. Goodbye. On what other live stream do you get on air tech support? <clears throat> Seriously. You never know what's going to happen, people. Never know. <clears throat> Rob needs more monitors. Yeah, I'm only working on one monitor. All right, so next up, okay, the vintage 60s tribute satin vintage sunburst dark back demo. Again, 9.99. So this is two P90s, cream color. Ooh, this is nice. I've never been too crazy about the tobacco sunburst. <clears throat> They're calling it vintage dark sun, vintage sunburst. Well, tobacco sunburst. They give everything new names. A uh, little blemish on the neck. A little ding near the near the cavity plate. <laughs> yeah, tech support. In, in Soviet Russia, tech support calls you. Okay, well, anyway. Small finish uh, pit and cutaway. <clears throat> Yeah, it's not too bad. Again, this is stuff that you could easily live with for the right, for the right, uh, for the right price. So yeah, now it's now the the stream is catching up to where I was. <laughs> if I hit live, there we go. Okay, next up another West Ball Studio in Ebony, twelve ninety nine. No, that's not very good. Uh, 59 Les Paul Standard Custom Kindred Burst Custom Shop Demo. The Custom Shop stuff is where you get really big time. So, let me see. See if I can get more on camera here. Uh, 59 Les Paul Kindred Burst. What's wrong with this? So, okay, this looks pretty good. Five grand, though. Well, it's a Custom Shop. Custom Shop is the high, high end. Okay, so you got a little blemish on the poker chip here, near the poker chip. Got some light scuffs on on the uh, top bout near the strap peg. Light scratches on face. And it's just like some normal wear and tear. It's uh, five grand though. Mm, you know, five, I know it's a custom shop, but five grand. So, okay, well, enough of that. Uh, we got an SG bass, which is uh, cool if you play bass. I don't. <clears throat> well, I mean, I could play bass, but not for $12.99. The, oh, wow. Now, take a look at this. Ooh. Now, this is where we get into dangerous territory, people. Take a look. Oh, holy cow. Look at that. 60s Les Paul Tribute HP Honey Burst. Wow. The P90s. Ooh, it's dark back. Oh, look, it's got the, the extra cutaway here. The deep, the deep carve. Les Paul, okay. These are nice. Gibson Deluxe Tuners. Uh, it's got a little ding right there, which is not a huge deal breaker. What am I supposed to be looking at here? Just some little imperfections here. That doesn't look too bad. It doesn't look, I've seen a lot, I've seen a lot worse. I've seen a lot worse here. Let me see what they say. Finish, minor inclusions in the... Middle of the back near the neck joint, minor dent at the horn cutaway. So there's minor inclusions here. Uh, fingerboard surface, minor blemish at the sixth fret. 
Finish Peghead's slight imprint on Peghead back from Robo Tuners. Oh, so they took the Robo Tuners. They took the. This used to have robot tuners on them, and they took them off. That's what they did. Minor finish burns on Peghead face along top edge and corner. Tailpiece integrity. Light scratches. Tailpiece integrity. Light scratches. Oh, so there's a little light scratching on the tailpiece. Potentiometer, slight quick taper on volume pots. Oh, okay, slight quick. So yeah, you turn it down a certain thing and it turns all the way off. Uh, neck profile, slim taper. See, that's a nice, that's, I'm telling you. I'm telling you guys. That is nice. That is, that is a, oh, wow. That is nice. That is, oh. If I was in the market for something, there you go, right there. What kind of warranty does it have? Two years soft shell case. Item sold as is, cannot be returned unless it arrives in condition different than how it's described and or photographed. Items must be returned original shipped, original packaging, product specs. Listed nine hours ago, very good, used. Honey Burst, 2000, yeah, 2016. They had robot they had robot tuners on this. It's an old demo that they're probably clearing out. They couldn't sell it with the robo tuners. Some they must have sent they couldn't sell it with the robo tuners. It probably was sitting in a guitar center for God knows how long or a shop some somewhere along or a musician's friend, uh, Sweetwater or whatever. Um nobody wanted it. It had robot tuners on her, robot tuners on her. Listen, I, I like the idea of the robot tuners. A lot of people are critical of the robot tuners, but I like the idea of there being some sort of hot uh, computerized tuning system, because tuning is a pain in the rear end. Yeah, okay, ding ding ding, you have to play the tuning song. Okay, yeah, there's worse things in life. But I'm in favor of any new technology to make things easier. The robot tuners was a good idea. That was executed very poorly, if that makes any sense. Um, they never worked properly. I've heard horror stories of them going haywire during a gig, like the constant grinding and everything. A lot of guys who bought guitars from that era just take the robot tuners off and just put Grovers on them. In this case, they've done it for you. So... Someone's knocking at the door. Somebody ring the bell. Who's that? Susie. Tell me. I am live. I'm the air. Tell me. I've been invaded. I've been invaded. You want to say hi to everybody? <laughs> so, it's Gibson Demo Shop Tuesday. He's saying no. Okay. All right. He's returning the, he's returning the hand truck. So, okay. Uh, like I said, so, okay, so this is actually, yeah, that's actually a hell of a deal right there. That's actually a hell of a deal. So, oof. <laughs> I'm hovering over the add to cart button. <laughs> now, I knew this would be dangerous. Okay, next, next. Oh, here's one for Mecca. Gibson Flying V Antique Natural. See, the natural finish is good. You see a lot of red. You see a lot of black. The natural finish is a good, nice change. Uh, okay. Finish. Poor sanding, underfinish on both sides of neck. Minor scuff marks inside the V, both sides. Finish back, small finish pit on the treble side at rim. Neck, minor lacquer. Checking both sides. Peg egg, minor blemishes. Near face, truss rod covers. Okay, well... They put Grovers on it. Gibson is going with the Grovers an awful, uh, an awful lot. I like Grovers, but, you know, they make the headstock heavy. Oh, wow. Ooh. Ooh, look at that. Yeah. Oh, that is ugly. Well, it's not ugly, but it's, it's just sloppy. Sloppy look. It's terrible looking. Uh, yeah. But you know what? You you buy this, you bring it to a tech, you have them knock the nut, not yeah, knock the nut, knock the nut out. They put a new graph tech tusk nut on, and they they also look like this. It's cracked. It looks like the 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 cap is 
cracked, cracking away from the headboard. Let me see something here. That is... Oh, yeah, well... Oh, for God's sake. I, you know, this is why I hate... Hate that. So, let me open the image in a new tab here. See that? Yeah. Look at that. There's a crack. It's the, the headboard, the cap on top of the headstock is pulling away. It's cracking away. I would wonder... I... I would wonder if there's some other damage here. <clears throat> it's got me thinking there's some some kind of other damage going on. The neck, neck and the headstock look like it's fine, but unless this was done at the factory, I'm you know, well it could be repaired, but that's the thing. I mean, it's okay. Well. Like I said, all, any of this stuff can be repaired. That's the other thing. But for twelve ninety nine, I'm thinking knock two hundred bucks off the price. Well, this this may not end up selling. <clears throat> all right, next in line, ooh SG, my favorite. Gibson Tribute Vintage Cherry Satin Demo, condition good. Finish top, uh, minor finish burn, base top horn, light dented rim, near lead volume knob, sides, minor dents on base side, horn. So this has been played. Light inclusions on finish, bottom end pin, treble side cutaway. Finish back, minor finish burns and trebles on the inside horn tip, joints, finish build up on treble side heel. So this is a bad finish job. Finish peg head. Uneven finish on peg head side. Top and treble side. Potentiometers quickly. It's like quick taper volume pots. Okay. So. This is actually. Yeah. So this is probably the uneven finish right there that they're talking about. Uh, ding on the horn. That's not a big deal. That's not a huge deal either. It's not a huge deal here. Eight ninety nine. That's actually good. I mean, this is in pretty good shape. Any SG? I had a chance to buy an SG years ago at a guitar show for four hundred bucks. Somebody had taken a magic marker and written the word "nada" on it. Worst case, I could have just sanded it off, or I could have just could have buffed it out, taken some, you know, taking some turtle wax or car polish or whatever, and buffed it out i had a chance to buy a sg for 500 bucks a couple years ago at music go round which is a chain of used music stores you know I'm not going to say where <clears throat> uh bobby baloney that patina that's patina hot yeah sg feels weird playing you need to get used to it dark shadows 308 yeah yeah well, the thing is, SG, they're all, they're very neck heavy. They're very, you know, they're very neck heavy. The neck, the headstock tends to dive a lot on the SGs. Um, so you ha you really, <clears throat> so you have to be careful with those. And you need a good set of strap locks. All right, next up. Ooh, that's nice. Gibson 60s Tribute HP Satin Honey Burst Dark Back. See, but the the other one was was $9.99. This is $200 bucks more. It's because of the metal. Yeah, it's got Grovers on it, but that shouldn't raise the price too much. Okay, got a ding there. Finish. Top light, dead, same. It's all inclusion. Visible seams. Finish sides, visible seams, light scratches. So the seams, it's not a very good sanding job. Small inclusion at control pocket. Visible seams, finish peg egg, minor finish, blemish, face imprint. Uh, imprint from robo tuners on the back. So another one, another another one they had lying around and they took the, took the robo tuners off 
and put a set of Grovers on with the Keystone. But it's, again, this is but this is two hundred bucks more than the other one, which doesn't tell me a whole lot more than you think you could just get two hundred bucks more for this. Let me see over here. Well, it's got a it's got a stainless steel. It looks like it's a bra stainless steel nut. That can't be why it's more. Uh, the other SG was in better shape. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was. I had a few dings, but it had a couple, couple. Uh, I would call it dead spots, but a little fret buzz. But that could be taken out with a setup. Okay, well, satin nitro finish tuners, Grovers, Nashville, Tunematic Bridge, P90 pickup. See, the P90s are are. The P90s, the P90s make or break this. That's the thing. The single coil, the single coils are a bit noisy. I mean, they they re react badly with like some lights and around different electrical fields. But the P90s actually would be the major selling point for this, at least for me. All right, that is nice. But like I said, for two hundred bucks more. I don't think for 200 bucks more. The other one had a nicer finish. I don't think this one... Yeah, this one's probably not going to sell. It's probably not going to sell at this price. They're probably going to have to knock it down another 100 bucks. Hey, 17 people watching the chat. How's it going? Okay. Ooh, there you go, Mecca. Flying V. But this one has the Vibrol on. This is a 67 reissue. Sparkling Burgundy. Okay, I like the I like the uh, the truss rod plate on that. So again, I, ooh oh oh now, ooh look at that yeah yeah okay yeah. So you can open the image in another tab yeah. Oh that's just that's just tragic. Yeah, it's got finish. See, I'm wondering if those are deeper cracks than just the finish. Yeah, that is not. That's not good. Uh, <clears throat> finish sides, blemish lines, treble side, light scratches, light scratches, surface blood, lacquer checks in the back. I call that more than just a check. <laughs> Three thirty-eight ninety-nine. No, no, no. Spe oh, hard shell case. Well, well, that makes a difference. Yeah, that's that's not that's yeah, yeah. Even even for something like this, that's pretty rare. I mean, yeah, that's kind of a killer. What would it go for new though? Four grand, forty-five. All right. Uh, okay. Les Paul Standard Heritage Charity. No, I don't like this one. Be good for someone else. It's got Grovers on it. They're doing a lot with the Grovers. The stainless steel nut, it looks like. Let me see. Grovers, Tunematica, 490R, MHS Humbucker. Two tone, two volumes, two tones, standard strings. Ten through forty-six standard strings. Nut material, titan. It's a titanium nut. Titanium nut, really? Let me see. Okay, there's a little, little. Looks like a little crack there. Uh, doesn't say. That looks like a little crack. But see the thing is though, I mean, there's that just might be a uh, imperfection in the finish, or that might be 
the fretboard pulling away from the it might be a problem with the binding. You know, it's hard to say. I always say I've seen worse, but at the same time, if I'm paying that kind of money, I, I shouldn't have to put up with that. Okay. Well, anyway, like I said, not for me, but maybe for someone else. Uh, ooh, three, Gibson 330 Satin. <clears throat> $22.99. Okay, I, th that's... Yeah, that, that finish is hideous. That that finish is... Yeah, uh, that finish is terrible. I don't like that. Not one bit. Let me take a look here. It's got Grover's on it. Uh, probably had the robot tuners on at one point. <clears throat> Some blemishes around the F hole. Little imperfection along the binding and the seam. Small dent, uh, uh, pickup and base side. Small dent on the pickup. Light scuffs fingerprints. Yeah, so this has been played. This has just been played. Looks like. Still, not hard case included, but for the fingerboard material, rosewood, rosewood fingerboard. Okay, that's nice. Tuners, Grover, ABR, one, two pneumatic bridge, burst, two burst bucket. See, the thing is, okay, the, the 330, the 330 is the, is, the, is the cousin of the Epiphone Casino. When Gibson bought Epiphone in the late 50s, 1957, uh, Epiphone said, okay, we'll sell you the company, which was a direct competitor to Gibson at the time. They said, we'll sell it to you on the condition that you have to keep making the brand. The brand You cannot just buy it and just shut the brand down. The brand has to be continue, continue to be uh, produced. There was a time in the 60s where Gibson was making Epiphones in their Kalamazoo factory. They were making... The 330 and the Casino, which are essentially the same guitar, which is slightly different headstock and finishes. They were making the 330 and the Casino side by side. They would be coming right off the line side by side. <clears throat> Pretty much the same everything. Same pots, same coils, same pots, same pickups, same everything. Uh, except different headstock and different, you know, different finishes. This is humbuckers in it, though. This is a 490, let's see, hold on. Burst buckers, this is burst buckers. I don't like it. I don't like the finish. For two ninety nine for twenty ninety nine, don't like it. Not one big walnut. It's well it's made of walnut. Okay, you know what? As as something like that, as a collector's piece, as as a example of a walnut guitar, it might be worth uh, something to somebody, but not for me. Don't like it. Do not like it. Ooh, we got another SG. Eight ninety nine. Very good condition. Slightly rough sanding, both cutaway, small dents, and output jack. Oh, that's nothing. That's somebody bat must have missed with the light scratches near the controls, bottom edge. So this has been played. Small dent, trouble side near the waist. Rough sanding, both cutaway, small finish, blemish, on lower bow. Yeah, so this is this is a demo model. Small blemish floors, back of head stock stamped demo. To which I say, big deal. If you're getting a good deal on a guitar, who cares if it was a demo? Listen, all guitars are demos. Okay, all guitars. You go to Guitar Center, so, you see a guitar hanging on the wall that you like. Somebody has touched that before you. So everything is a demo. Uh, okay, what kind of pickups do we have here? <clears throat> uh, nut material tech, tectoid. 490R and a 490T. Okay, this must have had the robot tuners on at one point itself. No, actually, no. I don't think it has. I don't think it had the robot tuners at one point. Twenty-two frets, SG, mahogany, satin, nitro. Okay. 
again, that's another stage. Another, again, another uh, another great example. See a little blemish there, little dings. It's no big deal. That's not a big deal. People can live with that. I've seen a whole lot worse. I really have. Uh, okay, Les Paul Tribute, Satin Ebony. Not too crazy about this one. I don't like black Les Pauls. I really don't. Little ding there. Uh, Clusen's demo. Okay, it's a demo. It's a tribute. <clears throat> See, it's probably it's probably got the ten millimeter holes. Let's see what's wrong with there. Uh, okay. That eh, just looks like bad, a bad finish job. Let me see. Small, just small lacquer crack. Trouble side of nuts. Small lacquer crack. Back of stop stamp demo. Okay, like I said, nine ninety nine. Actually, it's a good price. I don't like black for Les Pauls. I don't have a. I only own one black guitar, and that was because I bought it by accident. I uh, love how it's worn like that, Bobby Bologna. Yeah, it's actually a nice worn finish on that. Okay. Les Paul Studio. Smokehouse Burst Modified. Okay, nah. Don't like it. Don't like the color. Got the Grovers on it. Grovers are nice. Okay, dense. Okay, this is just you know demo. This is a actually this back headstop back mod. So this is a modified guitar. <clears throat> this has been modified somehow. Uh, it's probably because it, like I said, they replaced the robot tuners at some point. Modifications P ninety four in neck, dirty fingers in bridge, white knobs. Okay, they replaced. They replaced the wiring and they replaced the pickups. So somebody had this and somebody had this and they replaced the pickups in this, which makes made me wonder makes me wonder what led them to replace the pickups. Uh the P90 the P94 is I wonder if that's similar to the to the Seymour Duncan SPH, SPH-90. To the SP-90s. Which I have a set of them in, in a hammer. A single coil that's... Like a p single coil P-90 that's meant to go into a... Into a humbucker route. Hmm. It's an interesting question. I'll have to look into that later. Uh, like I said, don't like the finish on it. Really don't and for the price eleven ninety nine no. Uh, okay, we've got another Les Paul Studio in ebony. We've got a classic ebony ebony. I don't like any of those. Sixty standard bourbon burst, modified. Not crazy about that. Studio Radiant Red. Eh, Radiant Red. Eh, don't, I don't know. It's off-putting that color. Ooh, this is nice. Whew. Wow, look at that. 1958 Les Paul Standard Reissue Lemon Burst. Now, I've seen Rick Nielsen play, play one of these. These are unbelievable. Look at that. Wow, look at that. That is nice. Even the backside is nice. Phrasing. Uh, okay, it's got the custom custom anniversary plate. Ooh, is that a crack or is that a, just a blemish? Let me see. <clears throat> Light scratches, both near strap buttons, lower side. Okay, yeah. Small dent on base side, lower bout, slight blemish around the toggle cavity. Small dent, small blemish, fourth, fifth frets, both sides of the nut inlay, small gap at the 12th fret. Binding, slight discoloration at the bottom. Finish peghead, slight overspray on the treble side, light scratches on the face. Modifications, backside, headstock stamped demo. But you see, that's not too hor 
see, that just might be just something that's right there. That might be something that... Let me take a better look at this, okay? Oh, that's a, that looks like a scuff. That's a scuff mark. Yeah, that looks like a scuff mark. Okay, so... Like a scratch or something. Okay, but... Four grand. Listen, it's a great guitar, but four grand. That's a lot of bread to part with. <laughs> uh, it's a... It's... Really, I mean... Yeah, there are bargains on here, but at the same time, there's four grand. You know, I can't remember who the guy was on, on YouTube, but he said the difference between something like this and something less expensive is maybe 5%, but that 5% you get makes all of it worthwhile. I'm like, well, eh, I don't know. What's up, Frack Off Felger Crab? How you doing? Okay, another SG. Okay, uh, finish tops. Okay. Rough sanding, both cutaways. Rough sanding, both cutaways. Blemish, treble side, first fret. Modifications, headstock, stamp demo. Okay. Again, it looks like might have had the robot tuners on. Okay, that's just... Okay, that's not too bad right there. This just looks like... Uh, it's just a bad sanding job. Really doesn't look like there's anything else. It's just a bad sanding job. And just a little ding on the headstock, which is not terrible. But somebody might have bumped it when you're putting it back on the on the rack. Soft shell case included. You know what? Just admit you hate us when you offer a soft shell case. <laughs> that, that's just admit that. Okay, that's not too bad. Uh, less well weight faded brown. <clears throat> oh wow, we got two of these uh, reissues, these lemon burst reissues, in three other carts. So somebody is buying these things. Uh, oh, Gibson Standard 64 reissue, Cherry. With the Vibrola. That is sharp. Binding, mild color bleed, and lacquer fretboard edges, peg head, light scratches, light scratches, minor burnishing... Tailpiece integrity, minor scratches, transducers, light scratches, burning. Demo. Oh, yeah, that's... Uh, oh, okay, the finish is worn away a bit. You know what that is? That's probably from being on a stand. That's what you call... Stan Burn? Stan Burn? Stan Burn. Sounds like a, sounds like a comedian. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Stan Burn! Okay. Again, nice piece. Four grand. Yeah. Heritage Cherry. Okay. Just got an alert on my phone. Had to cancel that. Okay. Heritage Cherry. A sunburst. That is actually really nice. That is nice. Uh, light scratches, small inclusion on lacquer. Finished sides, lacquer, small blemishes. Light scratches, small dents, lower bout. Finished neck, light scratches. Finished peg head, light scratches, small burn. Trouble side, wrist point. Light scratches. Bridge, light scratches. Uh, yeah, somebody that's been played. Uh, tailpiece, light scratches. Pickups, transducers, light scratches. Modification, demo. So again, we have another one with the Grovers and the Keystone tuners trying to make them look like the old school ones. Uh, okay, got a little ding there. Not terrible. Okay, got a little ding there. Again, not terrible. 
Nut material, tectoid. You know, actually, this is actually a good deal. This is actually a really good deal. This would go well, but the, on the downside is you'd probably pay another three or four hundred, four, maybe four or five hundred easily. But this is actually uh, for a something brand new. But uh, considering the conditions is in, this is actually a pretty good deal for somebody. So okay, serial number. Okay, the the first and the fifth number are the year it was made. So this is one, two, three, four, five. So this is made in 2010? Yeah, 2010. So okay, so this is about 10 years old, 11 years old. So as 11 year old guitars go, this is actually in pretty good condition. Um, but I have to ask, is someone gonna want to spend the money on this or would you want to go with something new in a standard that is about the same price used a little bit newer but used that might not have a couple of the issues the issues it has aren't bad oh it's got locking tuners on it okay it's got locking tuners looks like it's got yeah it's got grover locking tuners on it Okay, well, I don't know how much that means to some people. Some people are some people are very particular about that. They like locking tuners. I can never get. Well, I had a cheap pair of locking tuners. Yeah. So okay. So the Grover locking tuners wouldn't be a deal breaker for me. Again, this is like I said. It'd be good. Someone could give this a nice home. Get some good playability out of this. Okay. Let's see what's up next. Ooh, ooh, <clears throat> now we're talking. Gibson Les Paul Heritage Cherry. Les Paul Special. This is, ooh, look at that, baby. Ooh, baby. Ooh, come to butthead. It's got the, the little button tuners. See, some of these come three to a plate. Some of these tuners come three to a plate, and this is individual button tuners. Which makes me think these were changed at some point. Okay, it's a little scuff here on the where the neck joins where it's the pick guard. A little discoloration here. Okay, it's just a bad finish job right there. But again, though, if you're willing to live, I'm willing to live with it. Small, small finish blemish near the bottom edge, slight lacquer sink. Yes, yeah, lacquer sunken into the thing, into the into the wood. Visible seam in the center. Sides finished blemish, light back scratches near the bottom edge. Somebody's played it. Small finished blemishes near control cavity. Again, somebody's played it. Small lacquer cracks on both sides of the nut. Light scratches fingerboard surface. Small repair on the second fret. Mmm, small repair on the second fret. I'd like to see that small repair. Uh, finished pegged, light scratches on surface, small finish, blemish on treble side. Back of headstock stamped demo. Soft case. Tuners, Gibson Deluxe Tuners. Two P90s. See, the P90s are what do are what does it for me. The P90s would be, are the selling point. Um, but again, though, you look at it and you're like, oh wow, look at that, nothing's wrong. But you, it's like you, if you took a magnifying glass to the Mona Lisa, you'd find all the imperfections there too. It's got the wraparound t uh, bridge, which is actually pretty cool. I'm not sure if I would swap that out for one that was... You can set the intonation. This is a 2000... 2016. So... That's nice. I like that. I like that. I've always liked the Les Paul specials and juniors. 
Uh, we got another Les Paul Jr. <clears throat> we got 11 people watching. I'm losing my audience. <laughs> okay, this one's actually, for some reason, this is 100 bucks more. White scratches, uh, small dust in paint. Oh, so they, yeah. So some dust got onto the finish. White scratches. White scratches around the neck joint. Slight lacquer checking on both nut sides. Scratches, lacquer. Okay. Transducers, light pick, light scratches. Back of headstock. Demo. Okay, nothing. That's look too, doesn't look too horrible. That doesn't look too horrible. See, there we go. Okay, yeah, that's just that's just bad workmanship right there. This is probably around the time where Gibson was the the quality control was falling off. Ooh, look at that! Oh, oh, look at that! That's uh, that. Oh yeah, but that just looks like just a, cr a break in the lacquer. See now, look at that right there. This right here. That just makes me sad. That's just the that's just the finish, though. But again, though, I mean, someone could take that to a tech, have them buff it out or whatever, you know. All right. Well, like I said, that doesn't look too horrible, but eh, I'm always going to be looking at it. Okay. Uh, ooh, we got a 36 Advanced Jumbo Vintage Summers Acoustic. So some of this stuff might have been up here from last week too. Light scratches on the finished top, light scratches on the sides. So this has been played. This is a demo. Light scratches, light scratches, minor blemishes on the fingerboard, st stamp demo. Mahogany neck. The best guitar I ever played actually was a Gibson J, uh, it was an EJ160. I played it in a shop in Bridgeport. I don't think it's there anymore. But it had a neck that was like a Les Paul neck slapped onto an acoustic guitar. It was amazing. Most comfortable guitar I've ever played. That was had to be 1996 maybe. So I'm wondering if this is a similar neck. So he's got the old school Gibson logo, the script logo. It's got the open tuners. Okay, like kind of like you find them on a guild or something. Yeah, see, ooh, like right there, yeah. It's not terrible, but again, your eyes would be draw, drawn to it. So you gotta really, to pay four grand for this, you gotta really be in love with this instrument and to buy it sight unseen. Not sight unseen, but into, without playing it. I mean, it's got to play really well to be able to overlook that. Okay, so, okay, we're going on to page two. Going to wrap it up shortly. Okay. okay. Oh, wow, we got a lot of stuff here. Oh, holy crap. 5500 for that? Listen, I'm not knocking it. That's That's just saying, if you're spending that kind of money, you might as well buy something brand new. <clears throat> Les Paul Jr. TV Yellow. Okay, that's kind of cool. I'm going to wrap this up shortly because Jeff's going to be going live on the High Council in a little while. Les Paul... Les Plus Heritage Cherry Sunburst. Okay. Okay, all right. Doesn't look too horrible. What's this on the back here? Les Paul for Les Paul's hundredth birthday. It's got let's got the laser. It's got the sticker here. That's a little scratch there. It's not horrible. A little scuff mark there. Not horrible. Why scratch like blemish finishes? Uh, modifications. Replace electronics with Quick Connect CPA burst bucker. First bucker, one neck position, lead sixty one position, back of headstock stamp mod. So they put in they put in new a new pickup with a new wiring harness to make it easier to swap pickups in and out. Which a lot of people are doing, which is again, you nobody would know that unless you told them. 
Comes in a hard shell case. Titanium nut. Well, the plus side, the titanium nut wouldn't wear out, but are you willing to spend that much more money? <clears throat> Again, okay, this is, like I said, not bad. I like this. That's actually really nice. Uh, SG Junior, 63 reissue. It's a demo model. Transducers, headstock, like lacquer sink, both sides of the fretboard. Okay, that's actually pretty cool. That's actually very cool. Okay, demo. See, now look, they get the three to a plate tuners. Why were the other ones, in the, oh, pardon me, individual tuners? Okay, that doesn't, oh, it doesn't look too horrible. A little crack in the pick guard, but a little rust on the screw. Scratch on the back. That's not terrible. That's to be expected. Buckle rash. What is this, 2500 yeah, too rich for my blood. To Heritage Cherry. Okay. Okay, all right. It's, not, it's pretty good. Again, this might have been <clears throat> another one with the robot tuners. Peg heads, light blemish and peg head and light scratches. Tailpiece there, light scratches, transducers, scratches on the bit, uh, pickup strings, scratches on the bridge pickup. Modifications, calibrated T pickup type neck position and MHS2 in bridge position. So the pickups changed. Back of the headstock, stamped, mod. Hard shell case included. Okay, well... Sold as is. Let me see. Go through the pictures here. See, it doesn't look too bad. See, okay, a little bit of wear there. A little bit of, like that that finish wear right there, like you're going to notice. Okay. J45 Standard Sunburst. That is actually really nice. See, now the Grovers are just going to make this neck heavy. Well, you got some finish checking. Those look like cracks. Finish checking or cracks there in the finish. Ugh. Uh, okay, can't... That's look horrible. Finish top finish, small dents, light scratches, light scratches. Binding, minor rough sanding at edges. Modification stamp demo. $22.99. Not terrible, but at the same time, you might want to. Anybody might want to spend another, the extra money to get something brand spanking new. That's just me. Okay. Oh, wow. We still got a little bit more to go here. So let's skip ahead here. Oh, uh, okay. We got the Les Paul Standard Heritage Chairs. This is the people of five cards. This one is Faded Worn Demo. Not crazy about that. Les Paul Classic Fireverse Modified. I think the pickup's been swapped out on that. We got another... 330, we got 335 Vintage Original Spec. Black. Now, why is this five? Well, why is this forty-four hundred bucks? Vintage original spec. They haven't changed the spec on these in years. Well, they have, but I mean, it's nice, but at the same time, okay, a little scuffing around. It's a little scuffing around the F, the F holes. Yeah, it's not cut very well. A little scuff there. Pickups. Uh, light tarnish on the tailpiece. Light tarnish on the pickups. 
like tarnished on the transducer. So this has been sitting around 2020. Where has this been sitting around? <clears throat> Hmm. I don't understand. It's four forty four hundred for this, really. I love Gibson guitars. I I I've played a lot of Gibson guitars in my time, but I'm dumbfounded why this is forty four hundred. And it can't just be me not getting out much. I mean, I get I I get catalogs. I get AMS. I get musician. I get musician's friend. You know, Sweetwater. It doesn't seem like it be, should be forty four hundred. You stamp VOS on it and you jack up the price by two thousand bucks. Gibson demo, Gibson SG. Now, okay, now we're back to slight rough sanding, cutaway, slightly rough in the cutaways, back finish blemish. Okay, light scratches on the fingerboard, finish pegged, blemish, back has stuck stamp demo. Okay, not terrible. Not terrible. Okay, well, like, okay, this is actually pretty nice. Just a little wear on the fingerboard. This isn't too bad, actually. Eight ninety nine. Okay, one available, two other people have this in their carts. Yeah, that'll go pretty soon. Yeah, that'll go. That's a good deal. Yeah, this one's probably going to be sold within a few minutes, within a few hours. Uh, okay, Les Paul Jr. single coil. This is weird. I don't... Okay, this is kind of weird. Two pickup controls. It's got, a pit... it's got two pickups, but only two knobs and the toggle switch. Toggle switch, which is usually up here. But they put it down there. That's pretty unique. Small finish blemishes, scrunch, light scratches near your upper strap button, small finish blemish center, small finish blemishes, 13th lacquer, treble size, nut pads, to your okay, soft cell in case included. Not crazy about the finish though. Oh, it's got a nice belly carve. Okay. It's got the button tuners, okay. All right, that doesn't. I'm sure. Where the heck's the imperfection that there? <clears throat> All right, a little little wear there. That's not terrible. Eleven ninety nine. See now. Yeah, eleven ninety. This might this would be good, but I don't think it's going to sell for eleven ninety nine. At least not quickly. Yeah, like I know what I'm talking about. Okay, everybody, thank you for sticking with us. We're almost done. Ooh, now that is nice. Now that is nice. Check that out. Ooh. <laughs> Serial number label weak, made in USA stamp. Finish size, light scratches, base side horn tip uh, near the end pin. Finish black, finish back, small, dense, trouble side in your side, lower about, minor finish pitting. Base side frets, 1922, light lacquer checking both ends of nut. Joints, minor finish bleed around neck, minor lacquer pitting alongside. Tailpiece interior, light scratches, modifications, Back of headstock stamp demo. Case shown included. That's actually sharp. That is very nice. Rusty Anderson played one of those, played plays one of those in the Paul McCartney band. It's got Grovers on it. Uh, minor imperfection along the F hole, which is not a huge deal. Okay, minor imperfection there, not a huge deal. Three grand, thirty one hundred bucks though. Got a hard shell case. That's nice. Thirty one hundred bucks though. I think someone's yeah. Someone's probably gonna be. Someone's gonna be picking this up. 
I think my, for I think for another you knock another couple hundred bucks. If this is if this is twenty eight. If this is twenty seven ninety nine. This thing sells immediately. I think this is predicted to sell soon. Well, one available three have this in the cards, but okay. The fact that the, people are gonna somebody's gonna walk away with this. Then again, people put stuff in their carts all the time on Reverb, and it you know they just keep them there. Eh, they have a haul removed from cart. Okay. Okay, and the last one actually this has been up here for a week. Epiphone Texan Antique, two grand. <clears throat> Now Paul McCartney used to play an Epiphone. He plays an Epiphone Texan, and he played he played one on the Ed, on the Ed Sullivan Show in 1965, and he still plays the same one on the road. He plays yesterday. Okay, that's well, that's the imperfection here. <clears throat> Finish top light scratch a small inclusion at the bridge. Weak serial number made in USA stamp. Finish minor blemish. Light scratches. Minor finish the back of heel. Oh, so this is a U.S. made in USA not model. Neck profile D shape. I had a chance to buy one uh, uh, import version of this back in the day, and um, little net. And I really regret it was four hundred dollars. I really regret not picking it up. Picking it up. It played beautifully. But uh, just the Beetle connection alone makes this uh, desirable. The fact that it's a USA model, even more so. <clears throat> they do limited runs of USA models every so often. The US, There's USA a run of the USA Epiphone Casino now, too. Uh, and that's about $2,700. Now, too expensive for me. I already have a casino. Had it for the last 16 years, 16, 17 years. Eh, like I said, I can... More than willing, I'm more than willing to live with that one. <laughs> but yeah, this is actually, this is a nice piece. I think, yeah, someone's going to walk away with this. But they're going to be very happy with this. So, yeah. So that's about it, actually. So actually, um, uh, the 10 people who are still, still stuck with me, I uh, want to thank you for hanging out. This maybe we'll do this as uh maybe we'll do this as a regular thing. Maybe we'll uh, maybe I'll do this every week. I don't know. I haven't decided yet. But, uh, but I thought this was just a fun thing. Oh, what's this? Satin ebony. We well we missed one. <clears throat> Flying V satin ebony. Okay. Again, not a big fan of the black or the satin. Light scratches, minor back scratches, trans transitions, light scratches. Okay. $12.99. Again, not a big fan of the black. Someone's gonna someone's gonna walk away with this. Actually, this might be up here for a week. I don't know. And this one's hard to tell. But I think somebody is going to, you know, this is gonna get looked at a lot. I don't think it's gonna sell right away. So anyway, so that's, I think that's the end of this live stream. Uh, we take a look at the Gibson the demo shop. We take a look at uh, the deals on it. Like I saw a few deals and if, oof, I probably would have walked away with three or four of these if I had, if money were no object. All right, everybody. Uh, listen, for the 11 with you hanging out with us on a Tuesday, thank you very much. World class bullshitters is about to start uh, in about twenty minutes or so. Uh, not world class bullshitters. The high council, high council, world class bullshitters. High council is about to start about twenty minutes ago. In twenty minutes or so, go check him out. Um, and everybody, if you like this, leave a comment, leave a thumbs up. Tell me if you want to see this again, and we will. I will gladly do this uh, again for you next week. Okay. And until then, I will. 